Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at a Turing machine. We're going to start with a tape of all circles that are black on the inside and we're going to have a head that can read those circles. Either they're going to be full, there's a full one, or empty. We're also going to uh, make sure that the head has got a state to it. So the state in, in our case is going to be the, either A, B, or C. We're going to start with A. And lastly, we're going to have a set of rules for that head to follow. And so here are the rules. Uh, they're going to be written in those four boxes. So right now, which rule do we want to look at? We want to look at the one for state A and for an empty circle. So it's this one here. Let's see what the rule is. I'm going to fill out all of those boxes and this is the rule for the box that we need. We're going to replace our empty circle with a full circle. That's the first thing that we see in our box. Next, we're going to move right. And lastly, we're going to replace our state to B. Let's see how that works. Now, which state are we in? We're in state B, and we are at an empty circle. So what are, our, what are the rules that we need to follow now? We need to, first of all, replace our empty circle with a full circle. We need to move left, and we need to replace our state with A. There we go. Now, we are in state A with a full circle. So we can see what we need to do there. We need to replace our full circle with another full circle, so we don't have to change that, and we move to the left and we replace our state with B. We keep on going, so this is a mini computer program, and finally we're going to get to this state here, we're um, state B and full circle. That means we're going to end the program. You can see that we're going to move to the right, and we're going to replace our yellow head with uh, end of program code. So, we have finished this program in six steps. One of the interesting things that you can ask about a Turing machine is whether it ends or not. So here we ended in six steps. These are more complex instructions. Here we've got three states instead of just two. We start with state A and we are on top of an empty circle. So what we have to do is we have to fill that circle then we have to move to the right, and we have to replace our state with state B. We're going to continue that until we've either come to a halt or find that there's a problem. And in this case, there is a problem. This machine will never stop. It will just keep on going. Your students should try to find a code that stops, and you should maybe make it into a mini competition. Try to find one that stops and leaves the maximum number of full circles. Here's an example. So here I start with uh, state A and an open circle, and here let's see what happens. Here I ended up with only three closed circles. That's not very good. I'm sure your students can find better. This was my first attempt. So I started out like this, and I thought that I was going to get a, a lot of full circles, but unfortunately, my machine started to go off to the right, and you can tell it's never coming back, and it's going on forever. So my machine doesn't stop, that doesn't count. So although I've got a lot of full circles, I don't win. Here is the best possible solution. In this machine, we're going to end up with a lot of full circles, but it also stops. I don't expect any of your students to find this, but it's interesting to experience. There are the steps needed to get to that optimal solution. You could also make a competition where your students have to try to find the machine that 
has the most number of steps before it stops. It still has to stop, but uh, you want to try to maximize that number of steps. So I'll show you the best possible solution for that, and that is this piece of code. stopped at 21 steps. Your students should research Turing machines and they should also research the man Alan Turing. Take care.